Welcome back to the homestead. Today we're going to talk about something very important for your chicken's health and that's roosting bars. Let's go. So the reason I'm talking about this today is because our chickens have had trouble roosting and going up on their bars. Stick with us to the end of the video to find out what we did to finally get them to go up on those bars. You have to excuse the fan noise. It's a little warm in the shade today and the humidity is insanely high. <laughs> Why are you so loud? You're so loud. Now chickens are susceptible to many different types of diseases and having a clean coop is the number one way to prevent most of those. And inside that coop, the roosting bars play an important role in that. So chickens roost high up at night because their instinct tells them to get away from predators. And predators prowl around on the ground so they always fly up. Now, if you remember from our previous video, which you can watch right here, we talked about the different breeds like roosting bars at different heights. With our Rhode Island Res and Barred Rocks, we have them starting at about 24 inches off the ground and going up to about five feet. Now, you can read all the books, and the books will tell you that chickens need a certain amount of space per chicken, per breed, on the roosting bars. And I'm here to tell you that that might not work out really well. The more roosting bar length that you have, the better it is for your chickens. Most books say that between eight and 10 inches per chicken, especially in the wintertime, because they do like to huddle closer together on the roosting bars. But in the summertime, obviously they like to spread out. They move their wings up a little bit to get some air under there. But eight to 10 inches per chicken isn't gonna cut it because we actually did that. We calculated exactly what that was and put it in our coop and not all the, uh, the chickens went up on the bars. So we actually had a couple of chickens die, as you know if you watched all of our videos. And they died because the automatic door came down on their necks. Why were they in that position? They were sticking their heads out the door or their rear ends out the door when the automatic door would come down at night and it strangled two of them. So. Uh, they were doing that maybe because they were afraid of predators, but most of them had their rear end sticking out of the door. And that was really interesting to us because if they were afraid of predators, they would have been alert looking out the door, well, like the two that died were, but most of them had their rear ends facing out the door. So uh, on a normal night, we would get one, maybe two out of the nine that were up on the roosting bars and all the rest were huddled on the ground next to the door. And their tail ends were sticking right out that door and when that door came down at night, it was not safe for them. So we, we took that automatic door off until we could figure out the reason why they were hanging out down here at the door. Now it could be because they were very young and they still hadn't learned and we hadn't been out here at nighttime to really teach them to go up on the roosting bars. We had put them up there a few different times, which is important for you to do. You need to train young chickens to go on those bars. Maybe give them a treat and then put them on, on the bar, something uh, that they don't normally eat. That would be important for them to get them up to the bar and get them thinking that this is where I'm supposed to be at night. But again, we'll talk about in a minute what we did to solve that. Right now, let's talk about roosting bars in general. Now there's been a debate for years about what the best shape is to use, but everybody's in agreement on what the best material is to use, and that is wood and or, in this case, grass, because this is bamboo. We opted to go with the bamboo because we heard it's the most natural way is for a chicken to sit with its front and rear toes hooked on to something round like they do in the wild, like they do in a tree. Now we know that these are domesticated over the time and that may have been bred out of them and it may be better for them to um, roost on something flat. And let me show you this right here. This is just a one by three and we've got a couple of these in there. Uh, we don't have any of these for them to roost on, but I'm thinking about putting one of them in. 
they seem to roost just fine on the round bamboo. I watch them every night, they sit up there fine, they fall asleep fine, and there's really no problem with it. Now the reason I think this is better too is when they poop, it falls right off. Anything flat, and you're gonna be scraping it off every day. Make sure though that anything you have that is round is at least an inch and a half in diameter. There are some studies done out of Europe and out of Germany specifically that pointed to uh, that width, an inch and a half, as being the best size for the chicken to wrap their foot around. And that's what they would go seek out in a tree. Anything less than that, they're not going to be able to grip on properly and not get a good night's sleep and they probably won't go up there anymore. So another reason those roosting bars are there is to give those chickens some place to sit at night when they're sleeping that is out of the area where they have defecated, where they pooped. And that is really important because there are mites and bacteria and pathogens that can be in their feces and you do not want a chicken sitting on the floor on top of that because, especially with like uh, mites or lice, they will really get into um, the underside of your chicken at night time when they're sitting there it's moist it's warm they'll crawl up and cause problems health problems with your chicken so that's why we want our chickens up off the ground similarly if you have something flat and wide for them to sit on then you're going to need to clean it regularly because those same mites pathogens bacteria lice and everything will accumulate on the top of your roosting bar if it's flat like that and if they start pooping on it a lot at night. Now also make sure your roosting bars are staggered in the vertical and horizontal direction both about 15 inches because when a chicken's rear end is <laughs> hanging off one of those bars you don't want somebody on the next bar down to get pooped on at night. So you need to get them apart from one another a good distance so that they don't do that. No chicken wants to get pooped on the head at night. So another crucially important thing is to keep your roosting bars away from your nesting box in two different ways. One is to keep them on the other side of the coop from the nesting box so it doesn't get pooped on. Two is to keep them higher, the first roosting bar higher than the entry point to your nesting box. Because you do not want them roosting in the nesting box and pooping in there that's a bad deal because then you're gonna have dirty eggs. So as you can see, we've got a, a roosting bar that's directly under the other two. Now don't worry, they don't sit there. They come up to the higher levels. That is just there to allow them to jump up. You don't want uh, roosting bars that are really, really high and that's hard for them to get up to and jump down from. Because if they start jumping down too much, they're gonna hurt their feet and that could cause uh, bumblefoot or some other disease like that to set in into their foot or some other injury like that to set into their foot. And anything you can do to prevent that is important. So you can see our top bar here is about five feet off the ground and this secondary one here is about 15 inches down and 15 inches over for them. Now the bottom one here is for them to jump up and to also jump down, which is important if you want to avoid any injury to the chicken. I've only found them all up here once together. Usually there's two on the ground, so I'm going to be increasing the amount of space on these roosting bars because this calculation, the 8 to 10 inches, just didn't work for us. Now another reason for them not to all be roosting is there's a pecking order. And even if there's enough space on your roosting bars, the pecking order still could stand. That means certain ones that are at the low end of the totem pole are going to be sitting on the floor and those at the high end of the pecking order are gonna be on the top bars because that is the safest place from predators. We have a lot of great information about raising chickens, so stick with us here on the channel by subscribing. So now I'm gonna talk about what worked for us and it's gonna seem odd, but I'm gonna talk about the chicken's vision. Why am I talking about that? Because chickens have great eyesight in the daytime, but they have horrible night vision. And that reason is because they don't have a lot of rods in their eye. You know, rods and cones, you learn that in school. They don't have a lot of rods in their eyes, which let, you know, absorb light and help you to see better at night. So as you can see, our coop is inside of our stable and it is really dark in here at night. And when they were going into the coop, they were not able to actually get up on their roosting bars. As soon as I put a light in there, a light that turns off two hours after dark, all of them went on the bars. They were away from the door and they are up on the bars. That is awesome. And that was a suggestion from my buddy Pete B at Pete B's Homestead. Go check out his channel, link in the description below. So who knew chickens needed an ample amount of light 
to get up on to their roosting bars and to feel comfortable before they went to sleep. Actually, the nights I come out here before that light comes off, they're all asleep on those bars before the light even goes out. So beside my buddy Pete telling me to put the light in there, I found this information about the chicken's eyes on Mike the Chicken Vet. He's an avian veterinarian and he wrote a great blog about a lot of different issues with chickens. So go check it out. I'll also put the link to that in the description below. Now I want you to go check out this video right here which shows you how to build an automatic chicken feeder that will keep your chickens fed for over a week. Have a great day. Love you. See you in the next video. Bye.